Hi everyone, welcome back, I hope you are well. Today I thought I would film a Q&A, it's been ages since I've sat down and had a wee chat and um, I feel like we're really connected and like these last six months or whatever have been really um, an amazing time for myself and you guys have been along on the journey as well and during that journey we have um, gained a lot more new followers for Wheels No Heels here on YouTube which is amazing so hi welcome if you're new I really hope you've been enjoying my content I know that Sean and I we have been absolutely loving what we are producing at the moment and um, hopefully we've got a lot more to come it's just hard finding the time to steal poor Sean away who works six days a week and then works for me on a Sunday so the poor man works seven days a week <laughs> it's like the Beatles song eight days a week but it's seven anyway <laughs> so a Q&A I asked you over on Instagram and on YouTube if you had any questions for me and you did you had some really lovely questions um, so let's answer them what is the most wheelchair friendly country that you've visited hmm. I have been all over the world I've been very very lucky I've been to many, many places. Some countries really shocked me with their accessibility. Um, some countries I expected there to be bad accessibility, and then some countries have been fantastic. Um, I would say the best country that I have visited is England and the USA. Obviously, I was allowed in uh, the UK, but England, the USA, the USA, the Americas, America. <laughs> America is amazing. Um, when I went to LA I didn't see much of it but it was relatively flat. Wherever I needed to go I could get in. Um, and America is just so big and open and it just seems to be a lot easier. Um, I know that it's a massive country and I've only seen a little bit of it. Um, Disney obviously is amazing but I don't know if that counts um, because Disney is just fantastic. Um, but I do know from memory when we went out in Florida and round them out that it was really good there So in answer to your question, I would probably say America mostly followed by England. I think we're pretty good uh, Best advice for Disney in a wheelchair. My best advice is if you need it um, and you qualify for it Definitely get the DAS pass DAS pass We would not have been able to have done Disney the way we did it without the DAS pass. Always be upfront and honest with the cast members. I often withhold information from some people because I think they're just going to turn around and say, well, no, you can't get on. Um, but with Disney, you can pretty much get on absolutely everything, but they do need to know what you can and can't do because they can make it even better for you, which is just an amazing thing. So always be honest with the cast members. If your channel wasn't dedicated to your wheelchair life, what would it be about? Um, it would probably be like a pop culture um, YouTube channel, like beauty, fashion and all that kind of stuff. Or <laughs> it would be about travel, because when I actually did start my YouTube channel back in 2010, uh, which is a different channel to this one, um, when I did some audition videos, they were um, kind of travel. Um, vlogs? Okay. Well, it's another glorious day here in Brighton. Last time I checked out the city's number one non-paying tourist attraction, but I thought I would check out the city's top paying tourist attraction, the Sea Life Centre. Here we are. It attracts six million visitors every year and it's the world's oldest aquarium. So let's go in and see what it's all about. But when you first walk in, you come into the main aquarium fancied myself as a travel television presenter that, oh, that would be the dream uh, so yeah that, that or beauty and fashion this is a good one what is the best situation that you found yourself in because of your wheelchair and what is the worst situation you found yourself in because of your wheelchair okay so I've probably found myself in some quite good situations because of my wheelchair. I think you sometimes get preferential treatment for things and you kind of get treated a bit like a VIP sometimes, sometimes. Um, one of the best ones that I can just think of, I'm sure there'll be more, but one of the things that I can think of right now is I took Sean to see We Will Rock You in the West End in London for his birthday. 
and um, I'd booked the tickets, I'd made sure we had disabled seats, and we had a good view, and everything was perfect, it was all a surprise, made sure everything was in place. As you have to do when you're disabled, you have to make sure and plan these things ahead. So um, we get there and the lady says to me, Oh, I'm really sorry, but the disabled access door is not working. We can't get you through that way. And I'm like, before she even had a chance to finish, I'm like, <laughs> I'm ready for it. I'm ready for the fight. We've come all the way up to London. It's Sean's birthday. I am fuming. What are they going to do? This poor woman. Anyway, she kind of stops me before I literally explode everywhere and says, but um, we do have the entrance to the Royal Box available and you can go and sit in the Royal Box. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> so we go um, through like from the street level and outside are all of the photos of all of the stars that have been in the Royal Box along with Her Royal Highness the Queen and other royalty um, uh, and from memory um, Elton John had sat in there as well and I was just like oh my god this is just the best we had the best view of the stage the um, the dancers and the performers were kind of like interacting with us as well because they could see us so clearly and it was just awesome I was just like yes worst situation I don't know why this stands out um, but I remember we, we were planning to go out clubbing on two occasions actually. Um, once we were planning to go clubbing and you know you get all dressed up, you have a few pre-drinks and you're all ready for the night and it's going to be a good night and then you finally get to the front of the queue of the club and they don't let you in because you're a fire hazard. That's happened and that absolutely kills me. And then another place um, I turned up to a club and they wouldn't let me in because I was wearing trainers. I can't wear nice shoes and uh, this was quite a long time ago and like the only option for me at the time was um, trainers and comfortable shoes. But these trainers, if I can find a picture, I'll insert it now. These trainers were, I know this, is gonna, this sounds really awkward to saying this out loud, they were Prada trainers, okay? They were Prada trainers. They weren't just any old trainers. No, they were Prada trainers. I had just finished college. I was working, okay? I didn't have any bills. I didn't have a child. <laughs> and I treated myself after finishing my A-levels to a pair of Prada trainers that were in the sale. And I loved them. They didn't look like trainers. This is my point. They didn't look like trainers. They looked like black shoes with a red stripe saying Prada on them. They didn't look like trainers and they wouldn't let me in and I was absolutely distraught. It was it was my birthday, my 19th, and they wouldn't let me in because I was wearing trainers. I went home, completely ruined the night. I wrote a letter to the club. I wrote a letter to the club's owner. I um, then found out where he worked. So I went into his head office. I hand delivered two letters and I never ever got a response as to why they wouldn't let me in. Anyway, that's that one. Do I have any tips for people with invisible disabilities? Um, I, I don't know because I don't have an invisible disability so I would hate to kind of give like any wrong advice um, or anyone come after me with an invisible disability and you know get cross with me. Uh, Jessica from Jessica Out of the Closet is doing such a fantastic job for people with invisible disabilities. It's Jessica Out of the Closet. She talks all about her life with a disability, lifestyle, yep, yep. keeping all things fun and fabulous no matter what. And I know lots of you out there as well with Instagram pages and YouTube channels, you are doing an amazing job as well. I, I don't know, I, I'm kind of ashamed to say this, or maybe I just wasn't aware and things are just becoming better and better as time goes on. <clears throat> but it wasn't really until I met Jessica and watched her channel that I really truly knew and understood about invisible disabilities myself. And I have a disability, um, but I'm beginning to see signs on disabled doors saying, you know, not all dis uh, disabilities are visible. So I think society is going in such 
a much better way um, and awareness is being brought to invisible disabilities and I think it is down to us, the disabled community, maybe it shouldn't be, but we have to be our own allies or advocates here. Um, so if you do have an invisible disability, educate, inspire and um, you know raise awareness. Um, the more we talk about it, the more we raise awareness of it, the more people are going to have more understanding about it. Do When I go to a restaurant, do I transfer into the restaurant chair? Um, this person says, I feel rude wanting to stay in my chair. Um, most of the time I will stay in my chair. Um, I'll usually be a lot, lot taller than everybody else in my wheelchair and I won't be able to fit as well under the table, but I feel a lot more comfortable staying in my wheelchair. It saves energy having to transfer to go to the toilet or, you know, if you're thinking about transferring, you've always got to think one step ahead, like, am I going to get sore from this chair? It's going to give me a bad back. However, sometimes it is quite nice to take a break and get out of your wheelchair if the chair looks quite comfortable. So if I was going for, like, afternoon tea, which I don't do that regularly, to be honest, but if we were going somewhere really Really nice afternoon tea with like nice sofas and a nice cozy fire then I might think about getting out but if we're just having like a quick coffee or we're just in a restaurant like when I went to the Ivy um, I would stay in my wheelchair don't feel rude having to get out or stay in your wheelchair do what is comfortable for you and I'm sure like the people that you're with and your friends and family they'll understand that and um, you, you need to do what works best for you I know I've seen some chairs and I'm like, mm -mm, no way is that bottom sitting on that chair. <laughs> hardest thing about being in a wheelchair. <laughs> oh, I think the hardest thing for me is um, accessibility, kind of moving around places and navigating, as you probably saw in Sean's video when he went into McDonald's. He was like, oh my god. Okay, so you guys, you guys. I need to know for permission. They're using up. I can't just nip anywhere or go anywhere or just quickly run out and get something that annoys me. One of the hardest things for me as well is sometimes being disabled isn't too bad for me It because I've been disabled pretty much my whole life. The hardest thing for me is the pain and the fatigue and because people can't see it so I'm sure this kind of um, people with invisible disabilities can really relate to this is because people can't see your pain and see how you're feeling it's really hard to get that across sometimes have you ever thought about having a service dog I would love a service dog um, I think that if I went out on my own um, having a service dog would just give me that little bit of confidence that little bit of extra help that I okay. could do with sometimes um, and I think I don't know I have never been out with a service dog I don't have a service dog um, but I feel like it does give you that extra bit of confidence and sort of reassurance which I would quite like to have and there are some tasks around the house that would be really useful and I also think that if I had a service dog I once I had it I think I would realize how helpful it would be and how but I do have a service daughter Easy. Daisy, go post it. Go post it. Good girl. Oh, oh girl. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> so she kind of runs and gets me things, which is awesome. Do you think about your life if you didn't have a wheelchair, or what would you do if you didn't have a wheelchair or you weren't a wheelchair user? I do. Um, have you seen the movie Sliding Doors? If you haven't seen it, then I highly recommend you watch it over the Christmas holiday period. It's quite a nice, feel good movie. Uh, it's Gwyneth Paltrow, and it shows her life had broken up with her boyfriend or not broken up with her boyfriend. So you see two parallels of her life. And I often think of my life like that, like if I hadn't been disabled and my life now and what I would be doing and what kind of person I would be like. I do think about this a lot. I think about like, what kind of person would I have been? Because I was nine. 
So I think my disability has shaped who I am. I've always been very arty and creative and theatrical. And at the same time, I have always been very sort of um, business driven. I've always been fascinated in business and wanting to start up my own business. My mum and dad have got their own business and that's always inspired me and I've always wanted to do that. And then um, when I started working um, in a big company, I felt like I wanted to start at the bottom and work my way up to the top. However, when I was in the company, they kept me down. <laughs> they kept me down. They really did because of my disability. That's how I felt. I felt like I couldn't expand and I couldn't grow within that company because of my disability. They would always put um, obstacles in the way. The glass staircase, I call it, if you haven't seen that video. I feel like if I wasn't in a wheelchair, I probably would have started in a big company in business like that and probably had worked my way up because that's the way I've always been. I've always wanted to like succeed and get to the top. Last question is what are your goals for the future? Um, I would love to make Wheels No Heels bigger and more successful and do more things with Wheels No Heels. I would very, very much like my own product. I have something in mind, but the only thing that's holding me back is manufacturing it. But honestly, you need this product as much as I need this product. So if anyone can manufacture anything, let me know. I'd love to go back to LA. Um, and I really want to go to Japan. I'd love to make a tra travel series on Japan. I've got so many hopes and dreams. Um, and they're gonna come, they're gonna come to life. So those are my questions and answers. I hope you've enjoyed them. Thank you so much everyone who sent in a question. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in my next few. <laughs>